emphasize to you is that, you know, this is just one feature in Sonar. Sonar is incredibly deep. Basically anything you want to do without vocals or audio or anything you can do with this. So, you know, let's hear what you just drew there. Let's, let's hear what you just drew. Right. Now, now, we're working with vocals in a way to make it like very normal sounding, but you can also do crazy things with vocals to make them sound very robotic. What I'd like to see you do, Bill, is draw a pitch change like from really high to really low. Just kind of like draw like a straight pitch sweep down. Now over the whole thing. Over the whole thing. Yeah, just just to show people how much control they can have over the... Alright, so let's hear it. You can also make that stepped as well. Step yeah, you can you can have it step down. It's easy. Now, uh, you know, uh, Akon does this. Uh, there was a share song a number of years ago that did that. When you start manipulating vocals like that, that's where you get those kind of robotic type effects that you know you'll hear on tracks. So what other kinds of things do we want to show people? Anything else in here? Oh, how about phrasing? Okay. So now the other thing, like sometimes your singer will nail the pitches, right? But they might come in a little bit late on one phrase. Or maybe you're working with the arrangement, and all of a sudden you realize, oh, now it would be really hot this part if the singer were dead on with the beat, or something like that. So you actually have control over the individual phrases. So he can take notes and slide them back and forth. So he's just dropping some markers in there. And now he's made that last note uh, shorter. And why don't you shift one in time from the, from the beginning, like uh, any of them, really. Right? So he's shifting his phrasing back and forth, so that allows you to lock it up in time. Just a, an incredibly powerful vocal editing tool. Now, there are a number of other things in Sonar that you can work with um, to get the sounds that you're looking for. We could take um, we could take this vocal part, and there's an excellent channel strip that ships with Sonar. It's called BC64. It's a 64-bit mobile channel strip. It's a compressor, EQs. I like to call it the magic bullet for your audio tracks. So. Just pull it up. So uh, it'll give you that vintage, uh, like big board kind of classic analog sound. So maybe so uh, some presets. You have uh, modulation, delays, EQs, uh, compressors, a couple of great e, uh, reverbs. Uh, so a uh, genuine lexicon reverb that ships the sonar. All built right in.
Yep. So anyways, that was kind of a disjunct demo, but basically anything that you can imagine wanting to do with audio, you can do with this application. Um, it's shipping now. It's won tons of awards. What was that? Uh, the tools for mastering, well, you could use the vintage channel for mastering. You'd want to, uh, you know, mix down to a two-track, right? And then, uh, you know, you would use a vintage channel or the band compressor that's built within it, um, various EQs to sculpt your sound. And uh, you can deliver, you know, in just about any format you can imagine. Yeah, does it OMF? You can import and export OMF files. Uh, for those of you who don't know, OMF is a uh, open media framework file format that allows you to tr uh, trade files back and forth with uh, Pro Tools or Digital Performer or Logic. So if I were to save my files to OMF, I can just take them to a Pro Tools Studio? You can take it to a Pro Tools Studio. Now, a lot of, there's some misconceptions. There's some misconceptions about Pro Tools. Some people think that they have a Pro Tools Studio when they use Pro Tools LE or Pro Tools Empowered. Now, that's not going to have OMF support built in, and you have to buy uh, a plugin for it to make it work. So it might not work out of the box if it's Pro Tools LE or Pro Tools Empowered. Uh, but those serious Pro Tools HD places should have the capability to open OMF files. You can also, another way that you can collaborate with Pro Tools Studios, though, is you can export broadcast WAV files. All right, and that's another file format that everybody will will support. So what you would do is you would select your entire project, go file, export. Oh, yeah, you're going to write this down? Well, I mean, but here's the thing. Like, I have, I would essentially want to take my breakdown, like my simple, like, 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 like Yeah, you want, you want your stems. Right. Each stem, right? Super, super easy to do. So basically, you would go file, export. All right. No, not an OMF. Export audio. We're, we're talking about uh, if they don't have the, the plugin. Okay. So then you would want to, rather than exporting your entire mix, you see where it says source category, you want to export tracks. Okay. And now what that's going to do, that will export separate WAV files for each track. And you'd want to select uh, not a RIF WAV file, but an OMF file. Um, no, no, I need a broadcast wave. Broadcast wave file. And what that'll do is that'll timestamp it. So what timestamping means is that when that wave file is pulled in to Pro Tools, it'll show up at the exact time that it was in your project. All right. Yeah, and you can just do it with one click. It's going to export everything. So you don't have to sit there and go, export the bass, export the drums, export this. Just in one step, export everything. And then they can bring the steps in. So, so the setting you're going to want, you're going to want, you're going to change the broadcast wave, all right, and then on file type broadcast wave, and then under source category, export um, uh, tracks. And you can also do you can do just your buses. If you did submixing, like let's say you don't want to give them all 12 of your drum tracks because you had multiple mics, but you have all of those going to a bus, you could export the bus, right? And then that would be the submix of all your drums. And uh, it's super, super flexible exporting. You can export up to a 64-bit audio file uh, of any sampling rate. You can dither or not dither. And uh, if you're collaborating with something, you don't want to dither. But when you're doing a final mix down, you would want to dither. Because that, what that would do is it would maximize. When you were like saying, let's say you had uh, your project set at 64-bit, you were going down to a 16-bit file to put on a CD, you'd want to turn on dither. What that would do is when it would jump from 16, 64 bits to 16 bits, it would uh, maximize the quality of your audio so that you wouldn't get any truncation. And that's all built right in.